Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 14 of Thick and Thin with LB and Duty. As always, I am your host, Dude I Rock. And to my, what, right, left, is L-B-S-U-T-K-E. What's up, Bizzle? Nothing. Same old, same old. Just trying to not let the man keep me down. Who's the man? We've had uh, we've had a lot of that recently, have we not, That's right. Mister? That's right. The man apparently. I, I don't know who the direct man would be. I would say yeah, I'm going to call Activision is the man. Activision is the man. Activision. So, uh, for those of you that don't know, and you probably don't care anyway, last week we did episode 13, and I called it Lucky Number 13, which I was incorrect. Uh, we posted the show. We uploaded it to YouTube, like everyone does, with dreams of becoming internet sensations and quitting our day jobs and doing this for the rest of our lives. And uh, I got a cease and desist letter from the YouTubes via Activision. And uh, what it entailed was they said because we had shown their uh, Blops trailer that came out, I think it was that day, right? It was like That's correct. Yeah, we were actually quick correct. on reporting it. Um, came out that day. We showed it to the crowd. A crowd of 18, mind you. What a crowd. And apparently, showing that to a crowd of 18 is no-no. Um, and it is protected under the copyright laws of who gives a fuck. And so, they shut down our channel. Uh, so, I can no longer currently, uh, at least as of filming this live show, I can no longer upload any videos to the Tool to Play channel that are over 15 minutes. They took away our... Um, Ability to upload the show, essentially, which is the reason we have the channel. Um, and I don't see any reason or way to stop that. I immediately removed the video from the internet because, you know, God forbid. Um, I sent a couple notes to YouTube, a little, a couple emails, and have yet to hear uh, from them as to when I'm getting the channel back. So it was really odd, uh, and I don't want to waste too much time about it, but... Who, and who are we talking to with uh, Twitter this week that was really helpful? Was a uh... uh, one of sorts. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's actually he's been extremely helpful. He's he didn't have to. You know, we kind of tweeted, say, "Hey, Swords, what's what's up? Why is our YouTube channel all screwed up?" And he said, "Well, let me try to take a look at it. Give me the info, and I'll see what I can do." So, props to him. Thank you, one of Swords. Appreciate it. Hopefully, we can get some resolution. Yeah, and so, and as I guess as of right now, there there is no resolution. And now the to go further into it, I guess the strange part is previously to the the Blops release trailer, which was freely available on the internet to anyone that wanted to view it. We also got an email from Activision's PR team. What did this email say? It said, "Welcome to the new Blops trailer. Feel free to view this." Spread it around. Show it to your friends. Share it. Link it. Download it onto your computer. Give it to the world. Share it. There was a lot of hand gestures as well. And um, we did that. And uh, they shut down our channel. So I don't know if it was sort of one of those universal flags. You know, I know that YouTube is constantly under you know, attack, if you will, uh, from cease and desist letters. And I don't know if they just somehow spotted the, the video and immediately said, oh, this has Activision's whatever watermark on it and we're going to hit them with this or if it was Activision directly, I don't know. But what I think pisses me off the most is they sent me the email. They told me to share it. I shared it. Now our tool to play channel is gone. Um, on top of that, when I found out that I couldn't share it anymore, I immediately deleted the video. And even since getting rid of it, uh, the channel has still not been fixed. So it's kind of a bummer. I don't know, uh, what the fucking deal is with that. So we've moved our videos back over to blip where they don't give a shit. It's the wild, wild west over there. Or we assume it is. Um, and we're going to continue to show videos because I mean, I don't know. That's kind of part of the fun of the live show is to show trailers. So I don't know. I looked it up. Um, apparently they can do this whenever they want. So the way, the way I understand it is no matter what, if the, if the video is free or if it's, you know, everyone's sharing it or whatever, uh, they can sort of 
enact this copyright whenever they want. Um, they probably do it just to be safe. They don't want ever to, there to be a time where they, um, you know, that's going to bite him in the ass. So they'd rather be safe than sorry. I understand that. But in terms of fair use, the only way you can show gameplay footage on a channel is if you're actively commenting on that uh, or talking about that. So then it's no longer, the content is no longer about the, or directly about that gameplay, but it's about you talking about the gameplay. And apparently that's what makes it legal, uh, which is ironic because that's exactly what we did. We played the trailer, the one they gave to us. <laughs> And then commented on that trailer. Fair use. Um, well, I think it would have to be, we would have to comment during the trailer instead of, you know, letting it play, checking it out, and then be like, oh, wow, check out the horses. You know, we'd have to actually, during the video itself, be like, oh, wow, check out the horses. It's retarded. Yeah. So, um, copyright blows and we were going to do a whole show on copyright, but that was going to be our topic originally, but I think that's boring. Uh, yeah. everyone knows it blows. No one thinks, yay, let's get more copyright. We seem to be moving further and further away from owning our own stuff where, I mean, we could talk about this, but you know, we're now moving with even our online games require passes. And if we sell those games, we maintain the passes, but the next guy's got to buy a pass. That seems to be the way we're going. Um, so it blows. I fucking hate it. It sucks balls. I don't want to diss on Activision because I do like some of their games. I play them frequently. They're probably a decent company. I don't know. But it really got me thinking. And that's all I'm going to say. Not a fan. Um, so yeah, that's it. So we'll try to get that fixed. And if it does, it does. And if not, you'll see us on blip. No big deal. So moving on this week, we decided because we have been talking about MMOs for too much, like too much MMOs. I, I mean, I don't even like to talk about them anymore. Um, but we figured, why do we keep talking about MMOs? And that seems to be where all the games are going and everything's moving in this direction of massively multiplayer, online, what, you know, even racing games, uh, sports games, all these games are developing RPG elements in every single facet of gaming. Anywhere you see it, even in Facebook games, right? Uh, Farmville, for instance, is essentially an RPG role-playing game. You're a farmer. Stupid as hell, but that's what it is. It's an RPG. Um, so we kind of wanted to at least take some time to sit down and say, why are these RPG elements so important? Where did the shift happen and how far are we going to go? Because if we all look back a couple years ago, not even that long ago, uh, I think a lot of the gaming world was dominated by the FPS. It seemed to be outside of the MMOs like World of Warcraft, which has had a long stay, um, of kind of slowly but surely building up to a ridiculous amount of people. Uh, but for the most part, a lot of the talk was about the FPSs. It started, you know, I guess it started as relative, but it got really popular with CS. It moved off the PC. Halo became big. All these other uh, games really became the main deal, right? And for all intents and purposes, they still are one of the main sources uh, of income for gamers. FPS is still really take a huge chunk out of the market. But what's interesting is those elements from MMOs, leveling up, getting new gear, uh, has also been inter in interjected, I don't know what that means, injected into our FPS. So now we see Call of Duty, obviously everyone knows, you level up, you got to play more, you got to get more weapons, you got to unlock weapons, and you're constantly building your character uh, They become more powerful. And that is a direct ripoff of any MMO in the last 20 years. Uh, and so the question is, and I'll, I'll send it over to LB with this one. Why has that slowly but surely been seeping into all of our games? And what is it about RPGs that keeps people so addicted and sticking into one game title uh, as opposed to moving on to something else? What, what do you think, LB? What's the reason behind that? Well, the reason is simple. It's, it's money driven. COD, you know, 4 was a, a huge success. And... You know, to my knowledge, at least for the console, you know, they were one of the first, if not the first, to really use that system well, and it was hugely successful. So everybody else sees that, and since nobody can do anything original, they went, oh, copy it. 
<laughs> Simple as that. Look, Johnny over here is making a, a shit ton of cash. Let's, you know, copy it and do the same thing, but we'll just switch the skins up a little bit. So right. that's why. Money-driven, no shocker there. But why is it remain so successful? Uh, it's kind of like crack, you know, <laughs> to, to, to most gamers. It's repetitive. Your, your instant gratification either with, oh, I got a new weapon or, oh, I got a new title or, oh, I got a new um, perk. You know, it, it just keeps going. And the biggest thing to me when I, you know, was playing and everything like that, for the first few COD games, I didn't prestige because I was like, why are you people prestiging? I don't understand it. You've got all the weapons. You've got all the uh, higher level perks. But then you prestige and it starts all over again. Why? I, I, it blew my mind. I thought everybody was just on crack. But people just kept doing it again and again, you know, seven times, eight times, ten times. Fuck Ridiculous. that. You know, I'm not going to do that. But it just works. And if it works, people are going to keep riding that horse until it friggin' dies on the ground and disintegrates. Well, I guess that's a good uh, a good thing even to, to talk about too is why now that RPGs are pretty much in everything we do. They're they're in our racing games. I mean in Cotter could talk about it. That's why, you know, when you when you race it's all about building your car, building your, you know, your stable of automobiles, racing them and and, and so on and so forth. And like you said in FPS and even in major games like Halo, games that we never really saw that from. Um, a lot of the word on the street, a lot of what people are talking about with Halo 4 is they're bringing these elements in, into Halo 4 now. Even Halo 4 is going to have these things. Um, when, when, is it where it, when does it become too much? Because there's, there's, only so, there's a finite amount of gamer attention, right? Usually, mm -hmm. generally now, because of all these RPG elements, uh, you're stuck to one type of game. Maybe it's FPS or maybe a specific game. Maybe you just play Halo. Maybe you just play Warcraft. Maybe you're into that. Uh, which I think is directly related to these these RPG elements. Um, but now that companies are all sort of getting on this bandwagon, it seems to stretch the the, the gamer pretty thin uh, because now they have to devote more and more time to games than they ever had to before if they really want to play them. And we've seen with the free-to-play model, they're kind of giving you avenues out of that, right? You can buy the pack. You can buy the class. You can buy whatever. Um, but in a strange way, and I, I guess I have to ask... I, it almost feels like they they shoot themselves in the foot because once you buy the whole pack, you have nothing to look forward to anymore. And and so I wonder if, you know, doing these these big unlocks or spending the money to, to, to get all of Battlefield 3, we know they've they've done that as well. You can you can unlock everything in Battlefield 3. Um, since doing that, I wonder if that negatively affects the attention span of the gamer and they say to themselves, well, now I got everything am i gonna play battlefield anymore uh, do you do you think that's the case or is it enough that the gameplay will keep them coming back even though they've finally unlocked everything within an fps is, is that possible or? <coughs> excuse me well uh, kind of my example back with cod you know in the whole prestige thing I, I had the same question i'm like why are you people rolling over again why are you prestiging it didn't make any sense to me I mean, even when I had all my stuff unlocked, you know, for COD 4 and Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, Blops, all that, I still had fun. I still played. You know, I yeah. liked having my right. stuff. I didn't want to go back and rehash the damn thing and do it all again. But right. people kept doing it. They just, it, they had, they found the secret sauce and they stuck with it. And for whatever reason, you know, people do it. Now, in the case where you brought up where people, if they buy a pack mm -hmm. and, you know, to unlock that class or weapons or whatever, right. yeah. you know, then I, th I agree with you. It's going to, you better have a game that's going to really hold the gameplay and it's going to hold your attention that way because, you know, otherwise, I guess, you know, maybe you already made your money since they bought the pack, yeah, but true. it is what it is. And that, and that gets me kind of wondering is, is RPG, is that element that we see in every game now, is that now a crutch? for a game developer. Um, because if you look at it this way, if, if they can build these RPG elements, these, these carrots on sticks, things for you to go after, um, which, I mean, that's really all those Facebook games and all those, that's what they do. They keep you playing because there's something else you can get. Um, is that a crunch? Is that, without those elements, would those games be able to stand on their own? Because when I look back at Halo, original, you know, Halo 2, let's even say, um, there was nothing you got. You just, you played the game, 
you shot people. You you got maybe new maps, I guess would be what you would look for. Uh, no, no. You got a rank. You got a rank, but I'm talking all even right. here. Okay, let me go back further then. Just to Halo One. You would mm. do whatever you could to hook those boxes up. When people had Xbox Connect, that you know, that <laughs> tunneling system, they would do they would clamor and be like, how can we figure out how to do this? And you know, one dude would be like stutter stepping across the screen. And you would play for six hours, ten hours, this game that the she had like a fucking eight thousand ping. You didn't give a shit. You didn't care. <laughs> you played it. What is it about that type of game? And I guess again, going back, is it that is are, are have the RPG elements now wiped out the need to make great games or do they make games better what do you what do you think is it too much now is it too many carrots on a stick i mean where are you at now within your gaming career when it comes to playing a game do you want better gameplay or do you want carrots on sticks i want it all jay oh I want god it damn. <laughs> give it to me i want it all um that's a tough question I'm giving you. I know, because, like, well, for, like, I'm still playing Super Monday Night Combat, right? And right. I'm essentially, I'm playing that because nobody I know is really playing that right. <laughs> right now. Yeah. I actually have not spent any money on it, but I keep going back, hammering at that damn thing, trying to, you know, build up enough cash so I can unlock more endorsements and all that bullshit. So, uh, I really don't have a straight answer for you. That I'm you, glad you've kind of stumped me on that. No, um, it's and it's tough because I'm trying to get in this into the actual you know psychology of 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 those types of games. I mean, I don't know why, but when Halo came out, I literally played 18 hours of that shit, just day in day out. Had lands, people came over to the house, and there was really no carrot on the stick other than I want to be better. I like the mm-hmm. gameplay so much, but I want to be better than the person next to me. Whereas RPG elements really are, I want to be better than I was. It's it's almost like RPG, even though there is the multiplayer aspect. The RPG aspect has always been sort of make my character better, make me better in the game. Not better at the game, but better in the game. Um, and I think that's, I don't know. I mean, that's a, that seems to have permeated every aspect of gaming right now. Um and, and, and going even like what Tank said, how he doesn't, he doesn't want to grind levels anymore. I think developers have become a little bit smarter now and they hide those RPG elements a little bit better. So maybe you're not grinding levels anymore or maybe they give you different ways to get more options to grind stuff. Uh, but in the end, it's always, I need a new piece of gear or I want this gun or I'm, I don't mind getting this gun because at least I'm playing the game that I want to play to try to get the gun. You know what I mean? Like at least yeah. there's the, the gameplay is involved. Uh, it's not like you're, you're a shitty level one. You can, all you can do is kill rats and spores for the next six days. And then eventually you're going to get a new ability. Yeah. Um, they're sort of rolling it into the actual gameplay. So they're getting smarter at it, but I don't know if it's actually better. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think the the developers need to be, need to walk a really thin line. Cause you don't, you don't want someone to have to sit there for 20 hours of straight gameplay yeah. just to get to the very next perk. You know, maybe the, the final super uber perk, but, uh, you know, you need to have a consistent, somewhat easily attainable leveling system. Right. If it's crazy hard, you're going to shoot yourself right in the foot because people are going to be like, fuck you, unless it's like the greatest gameplay game ever. It's got to be great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're going to do grinding, it's 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 got to be just just great. But gr- and grinding is inherently bad, right? I mean, like people, I don't think you, I don't think at this point in in gaming cycle, uh, you can actually have a grindy game. Uh, most MMOs have at least like even you look at Star Wars, and I don't want to go into MMOs because I said we wouldn't talk too much about them, but at least in Star Wars, they took a lot of that grindiness out and put in a lot of the story RPG elements. They went more into the actual RPG role playing. Uh, than actually just like, hey, kill 18 spores. They didn't get it perfect, but you can tell they're trying to hide it. They're masking the grind uh, through other elements of gameplay, which which mm-hmm. is good. Um, but it's so prevalent in our gaming now that my, I guess my next question would be, are we ever going to see a revolt of the RPG element, the role-playing? Are we going to see that come out of the game? And are we seeing, maybe even are we seeing any games in the future that are just core gameplay that are not 
based on this RPG system. Is anything yeah. even out there or will do you think we'll ever see sort of, you know, because I think like even Tank said, people are kind of getting sick of that in their games. And I, I have to agree. I have a limited amount of game time. When I sit down and play a game, sometimes I just want to shoot people in the face. Mm. And like yesterday, we played Battlefield for what, an hour I had to play with yeah. you? I felt kind of shitty. Like you were talking about how you got that, the F whatever, the what, whatever. F2000. F2000, which I call a fuck you duty. That's what I think that stands for. But I can't get that. You know, I'm not, it's going to be forever until I can actually get that gun. You know what I mean? I, I got to work. I got to wake up at fucking six in the morning now. I, I don't have time. So in a weird way, you know, I feel like it works against players as well. And I still want that carrot because I want to know that I'm getting better. But at the same time, I don't have the time to put in to actually get it. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm a little revolty, if that's a word. I'm a little revolty. How about you? Well, I, I think, you know, they've done the smart thing. They've, they've given you the option where you can just unlock everything and pay for it. Um, yeah. I think it, it, you would have more people feel like you do where they'd be like, well, I, I don't have, you know, two to three hours every single night, five, six times a week to unlock, you know, level 40 stuff, level 50 stuff or whatever the case may be. So they, they kind of figure that out and they'll be like, all right, well, you know, you want this stuff, give us a few bucks and you can, you know, you can have it and be like everybody else. So that, that's a good thing for them. Uh, to your other point of will there be this huge revolt in the in the industry? Well, a few years ago you kind of thought that about FPS because like before the whole RPG thing coming out, everything was FPS coming out. Yeah, you know right. you were shooting everything. How do we you know? beat Halo? How do we match Halo? How do we exactly? So everybody was trying to to do their thing, and then you know they they went to their strengths or what they kind of understood, combined the both, and they they went to the next evolution of that. Well, yes, something else will be coming out. When is that going to happen? I don't know. It, it, I think it's going to take something where you're going to have to have an indie developer who zero fucks, he just loves the game he's making, have it throw out there and just have it blow up. Just be the next game. And when that happens, whatever that may be, you know, that's going to be the next big yeah, thing. Yeah, that's the big thing, yeah. I mean, it, it is really interesting, and it's it's something that I think I don't think a lot of people notice. It was one of the things that when I was thinking about what we should do for a topic, and I was like, oh, do I want to do MMOs? And we were actually, me and LB were discussing that I think the topic was going to be, you know, is the PC platform taking over the console platform? Like, who's winning that war? And I just, I kind of was thinking about the games I'm, I'm, I'm playing recently. I'm kind of looking forward to Diablo a little bit. Uh, I'm winding down on Star Wars. I'm playing a little bit of Battlefield. And I was like, you know what all these games have in common? And I was like, you know what? They're all, all of them are fucking RPGs. It's like, I try to think of, of the, of a game that I've played in the last, I don't know, five years maybe since, cause even, even Halo Reach did the whole, you know, build your set and all that bullshit. Um, I think it's been about five years since I've played a game that, that was, you know, just the game, you know, pick mm -hmm. it up, play it, shoot people, put it down. Um, and I think that directly relates to keeping, you know, keeping people within one IP, keeping them sucked into a certain type of gameplay so that when part two comes out, they know what they're getting. They know they get to basically reset the clock and start all over and start leveling again and get into that next carrot. So I don't know. It was a, one of those, you know, sort of things where I thought about it and was like, man, this is, this is kind of fucked up. I mean, uh, we don't have any non RPG games at all. I can't think mm -hmm. of any. Nope. Um, but I don't know. And, and, and everyone's even saying in chat, I just, just to, to reference chat for the recorded listeners, uh, everyone's super, seems to be super psyched about, about D3. Um, and when I look at D3, and it's a good thing to talk about because when I look at D3, when it comes to an RPG, that's really as, as carried on as sticky as you can get. I mean, it's like taking Warcraft, World of Warcraft or another MMO, taking, stripping all those elements out of it, you know, skill, abilities, fun <laughs> as I sometimes tell LB um, and putting in core RPG mechanics. You take a tune, you grind it out. You, li you literally dungeon grind. That is what the game is based on. You go with a couple of friends, you fucking grind for five hours, you get some shiny loot and you shut the game off. Um, 
And it's weird to see that sort of like, you know, a level of excitement for people that are just like, Hey, I'm, I'm super stoked to, to grind 50 levels tonight. I mean that, right. That's, that's what Diablo is, isn't it? At its core. I mean, am I missing something? I, I played the shitload out of, of D2 and that yeah. was like, you know, come out of your basement, you know, go into your room at fucking <laughs> at fucking 11 o'clock AM and then come out six weeks later with a full beard and you can't see, in, you know, two feet in front of you. That was D2. You know, grind doesn't even begin to, to, to really describe it. You know, there was no real end game. I mean, I, eventually you got to a point where you basically just played the game for the sake of playing the game. But, you know, grindiness is that's right in their wheelhouse. That's that is the blizzard motto. How do we fucking, you know. How do we give you another carrot? So what is it that makes people so stoked for, for D3? Is it, is it mostly that, that sort of nostalgia or I don't know. Like, I think it's it? definitely a lot of the nostalgia, you know, what has it been 12 years, 10 years, something, something like that. Um, plus, you know, it's, it's, you have your RPG elements in it. You have your dungeon crawl in it and uh, you get to play Diablo again. So you, I think right. a combination of all those is what the big, Oh, I've got to have it. I've got to have it, and and I think that's going to be the main thing. And I think they they're going to do some different stuff to it. You know, they still have to stick the PvP aspect back into it, right. which will come in the future. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, I think people just want to play Diablo again and and want to miss the sun and, <laughs> and not want, see their yes. families. S- search out the the darkness, literally, because <laughs> I mean that's I I'm not even super stoked for the game. I did buy it today, even though Activision got rid of our youtube channel i still gave them money i didn't tell you this by the way i bought it today lb oh yeah so you know um but you know part of it i I think tanks got the best grasp on it i think the shiny loots is what everyone loves i mean i think you know being able to improve your character you know new skills new abilities whatever that's that core rpg it's almost like let's let's they don't even pretend right they're not even like there's a story here, you know, they're like, yeah, there's a story, but really it's just you going out for 40 hours and getting some gear. Right. I mean, like let's not take the gameplay too far. Let's not take ourselves too seriously. Right. I mean, that's, and I haven't seen that in a while. I mean, honestly, you see a lot of people are trying to sugarcoat it and pretend it's not an RPG, but Diablo is just like, fuck it, dear. You got, (laughs) you got 18 hours to spare, bro. Sweet. Sit down. We're going to do some serious grinding. Right. I mean, that's, (laughs) Maybe that's why I'm so afraid to buy. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's like I I have the most addictive personality in the world. And my fear is that I will not show up for work for two weeks. <laughs> that's my, that, is my, that is my ultimate fear. I'm going to fucking install the game. I'm going to play. And you'll never hear from me again. Well, okay. Now, question for you. Right. Now that you don't have the same free time anymore as you once did. Uh-huh. Do you think you'll be playing this game longer because you can't play for your six hours, eight hours, ten hours at a time? Hmm. You're going to have to spread that out over multiple days. And and because you do have a very addictive personality when you play, you know, you're going to keep being like, oh, I got to play tomorrow night or I got to play this weekend and I'm going to get that uh, shiny gold piece or whatever. I think it may string out the game for you. You might be right, and it's actually something I thought about in terms of the RPG element uh, when, when I was thinking about doing this topic. Uh, the only backfire to a game like this is because I have that personality, I want to be better or whatever, however you want to look at it. Competitive, I don't know, addictive, whatever. It's all the same. Um, I, w- I get frustrated easily when I can't progress fast enough. <laughs> so my concern, and this is, you know how I am with FPS games. You know this yeah. all too well. <laughs> competition, whatever. If I don't have the time to put in to become good and then I get into a situation where I'm playing the game and there's a dude that's been playing for like 80 hours and obviously he's whooping ass. I mean, come on. That frustrates me enough to never want to play the game again. So it could go either way. You know, when I play an RPG, I want to, I want to fucking play the hell out of it and I don't want to just, you know, be okay. I don't want to, here's what it is. I don't want to come home from work, log in, I see you in there. You're level 50. <laughs> I'm level like four. And I'm like, and I'm like, Hey, you want to play with me? And you're like, why would I No. 
Sorry. You're, you're just, you're shitty. Yeah. You're shitty now. Right. No. You don't think that'll happen? <laughs> no, I'll help you out. Right. I mean, I, about I help people out. Yeah, right. That's what I do. I'll go back if they really need some help. You know, am I going to want to regrind uh-huh. 40 Here levels with you in a night? No. <laughs> if you get stuck on some stuff, yeah, I'll hop in and hack slash freeze kill move on that type of thing i'm with i'm with i'm reading chat right now i'm with pulse shiny's farmer <laughs> that's my only i have to do it got no choice uh, i'm kind of interested in the whole uh being able to sell the stuff for real cash I see wanna... i know, i worry for you that's my separate uh, thing is i worry for you <laughs> i worry i worry that i'm gonna come home from work and you're gonna be like bloodshot and like fucking hung over and i'm like oh me what's wrong you're like i just made 40 million dollars in <laughs> i bought three more so, computers yeah, so yeah. i could get four more logins yeah like right i'll yeah I'll, like i'll turn on the webcam for the fucking show and your two little kids will be in the back like fucking hammer away <laughs> like lb you can't do that be like don't tell me how to raise my children <laughs> daddy's gotta eat They'll eat later. Right. <laughs> Fend for themselves. Sow some food on the floor. Eat right. some bologna. No, it's, yeah, it's, it's true. But anyway, that's... It's interesting. That's all I'm saying. So the, the way the game is going and the way the RPG is going, I, I think I ultimately agree with what Cotter was saying and what a couple other people were saying, which is... As long as it's as long as the gameplay is good, you don't even notice the RPG, or you're not even aware of the RPG, and that's just solid. That is always solid game design. So, um, you know, I mean, I guess I'm cool with it. I do feel like the RPG is getting a little a little crazy now, and eventually, maybe not soon, but some, maybe some sort of a backlash. Maybe we can get back to the days when we just shoot people in the face. Um. All right. Anyway, so that's going to wrap it up for our topic. LB, are you actually going to take over the game releases for the week? Or are you going to like? Punch I'm Shelby? I'm I'm actually replying to one of our to uh, Jay Carter. So maybe you could start with a couple of those. Why do I? What? You? I feel like you come up with the reasons not to do this now. <laughs> this is why I feel I did. I'm not. I'm replying. I'm replying to our loyal viewers. That's true. That's true. Anyway, okay. I'm giving back. All right. Here we go. This week, new releases. From our next guest next week, Pulse. Uh, Starhawk on the PS3. Third person shooter from the maker of Warhawk. Battles not only occur on foot, but in vehicle and also in air combat. Game includes the build a battle system in which you uh, fortify locations and receive new weapons and vehicles for upgrading locations. Game includes single player campaign, 32 multiplayer levels, and four player co-op. 50 bucks on the PS3 LB. What do you think? <sighs> PS3. Oh, dear God. Nothing. You know what? It, it, honestly, it yeah. kind of seems, the, the videos I've seen, it's a little bit interesting, so I'm not going to give it zero fucks. I'm going to give it one fuck. You get that one fuck? That's it? One. You're like, one. you're literally putting just the tip in. It's just the tip. Just. Just to see tip. how it feels. Just, beep, it just oh, it's not too bad. And yep, that's it. Next up, PC releases, and this is a pretty quiet week, I will say. PC mm. releases Nexunas. I don't even know how to fucking pronounce this, but it's on Steam, and I like Steam. Uh, it's a first person shooter available for the Steam network. It's nine bucks. So, again, these games are coming out nine bucks. I mean, it's nine bucks. What do you care? You buy, you know, a number. Of, what is it? What's the Baconator from Wendy's? How much does that cost? Oh my god! Baconator, I don't know. Is it five bucks? Six Baconator bucks, like or that. this Nexuis or whatever you can you can choose. I go with the Baconator. Uh, next on the list is Warlock, Master of the Arcane. The title already sounds gay. Not a fan. Turn-based fantasy game based on the uh, Majesty franchise. The game includes three different races to use. The battlefield uses a hexagon-based map in addition to capturing new cities and fortifying those locations. 20 bucks. Too high. Right? 20 mm-hmm. bucks. How do you feel about that? Too much money. Too much money. Too much. Won't spend it anymore. I'm, I'm like a... I don't know. It's weird now that I have a little bit more cash. I don't want to spend any of it. Well, I mean, I think about this one. All right, say you wanted to try that Nexus or whatever it was, and then the Warlock. I mean, that's you know twenty nine bucks right there. You're halfway to D three. 
That's a very good point. You know, D three's coming out in a week. I, okay, if I skip those two games, I'm halfway to paying off D three. I like your math. I'm with you. Thank you. High five. Uh, We've got some arcade releases, and actually, that's it. Um, Ashura's Wrath, that's the lost episode one. At last, someone angrier than me. DLC for the PS3, Xbox 360. The latest downloadable content for Ashura's Wrath. This is uh, the first of two crossovers with the Street Fighter franchise. In this episode, you play as Ashura and fight against Ryu. You know, it's weird. I used to love this franchise. I kind of feel like shitty that I've abandoned fighting games. Maybe, you know what? Maybe fighting games are the last bastion of no RPG. I don't know. Are there, are, have they put those elements in, the, in that game? Maybe I just gave them an idea. Do fighting games, can you level up your character in Street Fighter? No. Uh, Not classic. Unless, unless they're going to match it with somebody of the same level every single time, it would have to be like that. Because, you know, you don't want to be popping into a random matchmaking game. Oh, I'm a level four. Oh, I'm just going to get fisted by a level 12 now. You know, no. It's going to have to be you're level into level. Unless getting fisted. Unless you're into that. Some people are into no, that. That's true. Yeah, just saying. Good point. Um, maybe that's what we got to do. Maybe me and you should get together and build a fighting game with RPG elements. It's the one thing that hasn't been done. <laughs> Let's go throw some fucking robots in that shit. Oh, I was game. just going to say zombies. I was just going to say zombies. Robot, listen, <laughs> fighting game, robots versus zombies. But you level up, right? Do you, are you with me? Can you do this? First person RPG. First person RPG fighting game. Fighting game with zombies. With zombies and versus mechs. <laughs> I love it. I'm fucking sold. Let's do it. It'll be it'll be two bucks. We might be able to go to five. Uh, and finally, the Minecraft, the game that everyone plays but doesn't like to admit to be playing. To be playing, it's like the new Warcraft. You don't talk about it. You don't I, let people know that you play it. Uh, but it is now on the Xbox Live Arcade, the Xbox version of the blocky PC build your own universe game that everyone knows and loves. The game will be Kinect compatible, but no one gives a shit about that. Uh, but not at launch. The game also includes a tutorial not included in the PC version. Who really tutorial? Do gamers? Does anyone use a tutorial in a video game anymore? They don't admit to it if they do. Uh, so I don't even know why that's even on there. The mm. game will include eight player online compatibility and hits your wallet for 1600 Microsoft points. Do you give a fuck about this at all? I don't play Minecraft. Honestly, I never I have. No, so I know you don't. I'm proud of you. I'm going to say zero. Yeah, you fucks. don't care. Given. I think Dixon is probably going to get it because he's a Minecraft uh, junkie. So he might. But. Well, you know what? That's, that's what we were talking about a little bit earlier. Like, what's the point of even putting this on the Xbox? It runs on a fucking, like, TI-83. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, exactly. you don't need, like, if, 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 I mean, I would understand if people were like, my PC can't handle it. But pretty much anyone can play this game. Why do they want it on their... Does anyone want this on the Xbox? Am I mi- am I missing something here? I don't know. It, it feels like a fucking waste. It, it's too much money. That I agree with as well. It's too much money. Sixty dollars Isn't that almost 20 bucks? Yeah, that, that is 20 bucks, And that's that's, that's too much money. I too mean, money. why is it on the Xbox? Well, then you can answer the, ask the same question. Why is Facebook and Twitter on the Xbox? Well, it's free, though. It doesn't count. Well, it's free, but still, it's... Okay, I can go to my computer to do it. I can go to my phone to do it, but it's on my Xbox, and I'm, I'm assuming they keep it there because people are using it. I, I don't know who. It's like, but there's like I'm two dudes that like are. don't. They just they only Facebook on the Xbox. Exactly. It's like one guy in Wyoming. I gotta like it. Yeah. Use my joystick. All right. I mean, I think it's a waste of time. I mean, that's yeah. just that's just me personally. Do you want do you? Are you gonna hit up the uh, what were they smoking? I will. I will do this. Proud one. of you. So proud of you. This week's What Were They Smoking? This week, the award, the award may appropriately be called the WTF Game of the Week. This week, the award is given to Dotura, I believe is how it's pronounced, sure. for the PlayStation Network. When doing research on this game for this week, I kept noticing a recurrent theme. That theme is that nobody seems to really know what this game is about. Well, that's, that's always a positive. You know what? You go out to the interwebs, you're like, hey... Tell me about Datura. Tell me about what's about this game. And you can't get a straight answer. I mean, yeah, you know, it's the interwebs, whatever. But generally, you find a consistent theme from every website you go to find of a review. But if you can't find one on the game, something fucked up's got to be going on. I'm loving these, these screens. There's, these hands are like, do you see, have you seen the screens? His hands are just floating when he's driving. What is <laughs> I, this game? I know. 
<laughs> it's like cut off at the wrist. You're like, I'm just hands. I'm hands. Did they just run out of money and they couldn't finish the hands? They're like, oh, guys, we just we, we ran out. <laughs> what is what is this game? This is phenomenal. <laughs> well, now don't show it. All right. I'm showing oh, it. Oh, actually, we could show it, I'm but we it. have to talk about it. I don't Are you showing care. it? Yeah, I'm showing it right now. Talking about the hands. Oh, well, it, it, look, look at all these graphics and hands, and yeah, now we we've just made our fair use. Fair use. Fucking qualification. Dude, website. this hand Anyways. thing is ridiculous. Is everyone in fucking chat looking at this? This is retarded. Hand is floating in space. Do we do we have any idea what this game is about? Any any idea at all, Abby, from reading uh, your, your comments? The Cotter says it's about bacon. Wow. Uh, anyway, uh, so know. that is the what were they smoking award? Is that did, right. you, did you finish reading the whole thing? I don't even care if you did because no, I was like a so. third of the way through. But eh, at some point, I mean, this is the big thing. Uh, blah 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 blah. Okay, I'm still following so far. And then you drive a car, and a pig is in the middle of the road, and you have to oh, make a decision that. to hit him or not. Ah, that's Cotter's bacon comment. I'm with you. Yes, bacon. Oh, I like that. Bacon. So and you the, literally are making your own baconator. Yeah. Oh, that's not yes. Bad. Yeah, that's good. I don't know if it's a smoked baconator. Well, I don't know if I'm it's cured. Yeah, I like that. I don't know if you fry it I out. Lo- I love didn't. all the games that Pulse puts up for what were they smoking. Oh, yeah. I, you know what I think we should do? I think for like one week, we should only play those games. What? How much do you think it would cost? How much How much do you think this game costs? Well, dude, no, if we did it this week, you look, look at how much it's going to cost. It's going to be... You well, mean all the games or no, just, no, just the... What were they smoking? One. Yeah. Yeah, just the shit. Well, you don't even have a PS3, so that's out for well, you. Well, that's true. Will hmm. you buy me one? No. All right. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, next week, we're going to have Pulse on the show because he fucking said he'd come on, so we're doing it. We're going to have three people. If anyone else right, wants to Pulse. be on the show, they can... Fuck it, I don't care. You can come on. You got a webcam? You want to show your naked titties? That might be... Those titties might be copywritten, so we've got to be careful. Well, but if we comment on the titties, then we're okay. Fair use. Nothing you can do about it. Um, we'll see you guys next week, 730 Central on a Tuesday. We will be here probably late. LB will be fucking up his mic and we'll have to push things back. But I appreciate everyone coming, everyone commenting. I love doing this. It's such a fucking awesome time. Um, my special co-host, LB, you can catch him on the tweets. What's your tweets, sir? L B S U T K E. The E is for excellence. Check them out. Uh, if you want to check me out, you want to, you know, maybe hit me up while I'm bored at work. I'm just, I'm, I'm, t- I'm tweeting more. Have you noticed this? Because I'm bored. Yeah, I did. I see you, you know, throw yeah. something out there. I throw, every once I throw some things out there. I throw, I give people a little crumbs. Yeah. You know? Wow. That, I'm, I'm, I am the master of RPGs because I, that's my, that's what I do. I give a little crumb, and then like, can I? Is he going to talk to me again? And maybe I don't. Maybe I hold back. And then I give him a crumb. <laughs> Let me look at his last four tweets. Right. Maybe I'll get yeah. a new perk. Exactly. You can hit me up at D-O-O-D-I-R-O-C-K. And if you want to listen to the podcast, I actually did the 200th episode with Derek D. Smith Nolan and Code Monkey this week. Uh, so you can check that out as well. That was my old show that I gave up. And uh, so we figured on the 200th episode, I'd pop over there for a second and say, what's up uh but anyway we'll be here next week we attempted to make this a 30 minute show and somehow still fucking managed to be an hour god damn it i apologize so we'll see you guys next week later later it's all your fault lb no it's not it's all your fault no hey I recorded the video cast is an rpg